campaigns finally bore fruit and there was something that he was actually doing, a message that he was uh, giving to the people in, in those regions. Because um, if we can discuss it here with my panel, I mean, take a look at that, you know, from at least those three counties uh, who is clawing back on, on, on the wins from 2013. You well, see, what the president sorry. tried to do towards the end, you saw a lot of trips that were heartstrings pulling. So with the demise of Professor Nkaiseri, I think with government really standing with the Mark community, you might see some Rudisha in Mukono that is happening mm -hmm. now. Remember also what he did in Yamira when he went mm -hmm. round and the, with the IDPs, did, did yeah. displaced persons mm -hmm. and he managed to... So he did a few of those forays into the the strongholds of his uh, of his opponents and made some heart, heartfelt gestures remember they say people don't remember what you tell what you told them they remember how, how you, you made, made them, them feel. feel and so i'm seeing some of these results as a result of the charm offensive that came mm -hmm. towards the end and do you see also with what the results that we're seeing on the portal someone yeah. like Makweni. Yeah. When he told them, you know what, I don't need your votes, and they decided, and they, okay, fine, we're yeah. not giving you none. Yeah. So it's, it, I think it's just some of these things that those last-ditch efforts where you catch some guys who are not totally sold. Mm -hmm. And so because if you look at that 42%, most probably those are guys who voted for Honorable Raila back in 2013. Right, yeah. because he did, yes, yes. But there are, there are those who are first-time voters, there are those who are, uh -huh. who are swing voters, there uh -huh. are those who maybe this was just a, a, a chance for them to try something new. So that is possibly where Honorable Uhuru is making the difference. Okay, and in Narok, um, when we were talking earlier and taking a look at those numbers, um, Alex, you were mentioning the fact that uh, Loasa could have made uh, yeah. a difference because he was here during Kayseri's uh, funeral. I think we saw him again during, so, uh, I think, the last rally. Was so it? that is like rallying the Man Nation yeah. Uh, yeah. across the region. Yeah. Mm. But you see, you know, I think there's a lot of factors that would point to the fact that Uru injected himself in the Tanzanian election and Loasso was running a very close race with, uh, with Magufuli, yeah, right. who happens to be a personal friend of Raila Odinga. Mm -hmm. So I think this could be very sweet mm -hmm. for Loasa to basically come back here and aid his friend at, a, a, in yeah. time of need. Yeah. But I think a more important point is really the power of incumbency. Mm -hmm. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, give it to Kenyatta, they looked at the county maps and they did their math. Yeah. And they said, look, so if Western Kenya is going to be in play and potentially for Raila Odinga and Eastern province might break, especially the Kamba side, might break overwhelmingly for Raila, how do we start to run the, the map in the counties? Where are the places we are going to start flipping mm. the former Raila counties back yeah. to ourselves? Because that's and exactly what, absolutely, if the absolutely, numbers are anything to absolutely. go by. Yeah. And then use the power of incumbency. Use mm. GOK delivers as a vehicle, as a mechanism uh -huh. for doing those heartstring kinds of things, uh, making people feel different about themselves, and then leave Raila to the rhetoric to say, I promise, I promise this, I promise mm. that. So I think incumbency matters. It does really matter. Yeah, it does. And, and if you remember on the campaign trail, um, what uh, the Jubilee leaders kept saying, um, you know, which really is attesting to what you were talking about, the power of the yeah. incumbency of somebody saying, I have been there and I have mm. done this, um, which would be difficult for Raila to say because it's basically mm. poking holes at what they yeah. have done well or not at all. If you look at, if you are somebody who lives, for example, in Marsabit and you're used to taking two days to get home and then now you are on the tarmac and it's one of those drives that's just a dream. It's not difficult to see why such a person would, would resonate with that message. Mm -hmm. The other thing I think also we have to give credit also to the campaign teams. As, as uh, Alex has said, people were not just going out for the sake of going out. Mm -hmm. Remember like when uh, President Uhuru gave the debate a skip? Mm -hmm. He said it's because he's going to the people directly. Yeah. And in the next, the, the few days after that, I mean, they were hitting 30, 40 places in That's like four right. days. It was absolutely ridiculous. There was a month Flurry. he did 200 mm. stops. Exactly. Yeah. And so all those stops cannot, you know, there are some people, just the fact that he stopped in our shopping center mm. would have been enough. To, to flip the, 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 the script for them. So we have to give credit to some of these strategies. Yeah. There's some things that they've done that have actually paid off. Mm. And um, 
because I want to talk about those the GOK ads, huh? yeah. mm. because to a large extent they were almost synonymous with Jubilee. I, I guess it was a little bit difficult at some point to tell when are we talking about Jubilee state delivers resources and, and, and yes, yes, when is it Jubilee delivers and when is is it GOK delivers? Um, and and I imagine if Gadar is listening because he had a lot of things to say about these ads, uh, and also Apollo Boya, who's the former CEO of the LSK, you do remember mm -hmm. he went to court on mm -hmm. on this matter, talking about you know the advertising. Um, of government projects during the campaign period. Um, but do you think those, uh, you know, those swayed things. the vote and actually, you know... Absolutely, uh, yeah. they did. You know, remember these statements he made in uh, Ukambani somewhere where he said to the chiefs, mm -hmm. I give you motorbikes and I give you allowances. Mm -hmm. And then you, uh, what, what do I get in return? These are jubilee resources. And he was very categorical. These are jubilee resources. These are not state taxpayers' resources. Mm -hmm. this, um, this is my money. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, but m on a more serious note, I think the injection of big money and, and state resources into our campaigns is a problematic thing going forward. I would love Raila to show us exactly how he raised resources for his campaign. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and I would like Uhuru Kenyatta to basically publish his, uh, his funders. Mm. And I would also like to know at what point was he president and at what point was he candidate Uhuru vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the resources that he was deploying at, the po at, at, at his campaigns. Mm. We had cabinet secretaries showing up in his campaign. So I think that this is not just a problem because it might hurt Raila, but I think anybody <coughs> else going forward, we are setting a precedence that you can use state resources for personal campaigns. And, and that there's no distinction made between those things when you're a president. If you see the United States, for instance... But even as he campaigns, yeah. uh, you know, does he still not... Um, he still travels as a president. We yes, can give does. him that. Yeah. But you remember in the United States, uh, uh, Obama had to set refund. aside, yes. refund his campaign yes. aside from the presidency because those resources can be traced. But here there's no traceability. So I think going forward in terms of running more credible ele uh, elections, election processes, we need to nail down campaign financing mm. and how much of state resources uh, <laughs> well, uh, are, are, okay. are utilized in campaigns. Uh, well, maybe, but let's see what happens with Parliament, because if you remember the campaign financing uh, limits that were there and, and what did uh, Parliament do, National Assembly said, well, that will apply in the next general election. Um, mm. Uh, you but know, in, in it's safe to say we're done with this one, just yeah. about anyway, and we'll start to face that question. Do you think we'll ever get to that point in 2022, or will we shift the goalposts yet again? The, the misfortune with our parliaments is that they tend to pass laws looking at themselves rather than looking at the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. That's why I was saying earlier that our laws actually need an audit, because most of these laws were made with self-preservation, self-gratification in place. In point is uh, the, the laws on um, corruption. If an allegation is leveled against yeah. you, you must exhaust all oh. channels available for right. I mean, where in the world is that the standard of morality? Mm -hmm. Even in marriage, the moment somebody says, by the way, mm -hmm. I've seen an SMS, mm -hmm. as persons have been cast, the trust has to be rebuilt. Mm -hmm. But here we are telling somebody, you carry on in office, you carry on with all the trappings of power, and eventually when you're cleared, then we will know whether or not we can carry on trusting in you. That time, the term is over, and if those damage has already been done. So some of these ghost posts are shifted, not because it's what the country needs, it's because it serves the political class. Uh -huh. And I'm glad that Kenyans are teaching the political class a lesson, because even with the results that are trickling in, we are seeing some big names that are looking like they are likely going to fall. And I think it's as a direct result of people saying, look, we have to start holding you to a higher standard. We have to. But also something that uh, Alex said about the campaign financing. I think I remember President Kenyatta holding a fundraiser. Was it a, a, yes, a million yes. shilling a plate or something? Yeah. Uh, fundraiser that, that trying to raise funds for his raised. campaigns. Yeah. So yeah. I would like to see now him telling us, okay, fine, my campaigns cost this much and this is where they came from so that we can be able to have that dichotomy. Because okay. it is true, he travels with all the trappings of presidency, yeah. Yeah. but... As candidate, he also needs to be aware that he leads from the front. And one of the biggest indictments of his administration has been the lack of transparency 
and corruption. So now, if he's going to fight it, he has he may have little control over what he does to other people, but can he himself hold himself to a higher standard and set the bar high for those who come after him? All right, so someone who's probably trying to change the game and uh, 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 as far as campaign financing, I mean, I think is an example that everybody knows. Boniface Mwangi literally raised his campaign money uh, from you know his supporters and yeah. people who, who believed in his message. Um, whether that is successful or not, we will find out as day breaks and in, in the coming days uh, ahead. But, you know, he raised money and every time, and you know, he had the accountability and said, I use 60% on tents and on this and on, mm. you know, making posters and on paying agents and that sort of thing. Um, does, does that resonate with, 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 with people? Uh, it's definitely an example of how it can be done. Um, you know, but will people just look at it and say, oh, yeah, you know, that's, that's, yeah, I think it's a model. that's great and you and your honesty and, yeah. and your integrity or, or, you know. It is a model because even, you know, in, 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 in as much as we are kind of frivolous and, uh, and just careless about the things that happen in the country, these things cumulatively then create a culture that is so difficult to get out of. And I've said on this channel many times that now we have a, a case not of rotten apples, or a rotten apple spoiling the barrel. We have a barrel that is rotten, that mm. is just spoiling every apple that you dip inside there. Mm -hmm. and, and, and these structural issues become extremely problematic. And it, it is then very difficult to have an IBC person who, is, who has integrity. It's difficult to have somebody at the Anti-Corruption Commission <laughs> who has integrity because they come from this rotten barrel. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think this thing is going to haunt us for a real long time. Huh. And, and, and the cost of corruption is, in my view, almost incalculable. But one, one of the things that I think uh, Boniface Mwangi's signals, which is, is critical, is this accountability and traceability of, of, of campaign finances. Mm -hmm. in, in many advanced countries that that have been down this path, uh -huh. you have to retire your campaign funds. Mm -hmm. yeah. At the end of it, you have to give us your books, right. yeah. clearly audited. Yeah. And, and malpractices can actually be a problem. I remember uh, <coughs> uh, uh, there's one US presidential candidate who actually used a lot of money just to make his hair. Uh, <laughs> he used to go for haircuts that were $400. Uh, and, 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 and it became a problem. Mm. Uh, and, 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 and those kinds of things, yeah have to come into a politics okay. as well. How, right. how is Kenyatta going to retire his, his campaign finances? Mm -hmm. How much was spent? How much is left? What about Raila mm. Dinga, et cetera, et cetera? Because you can't raise money from the public and then use those for, your, for yourself. Yeah. And okay. I, would, I, would, I would like to find out from, uh, from Boniface Mwangi yeah. how he's going to retire his campaign finances. All right. no, he's left out and, of and, that. And even so when he about to say, yeah. one other important aspect with what Boniface has done is that it also changes the electorate. Because if you... Actually, take your hard earned money and invest in a candidate. Mm. You yourself also demand more of the of, candidate yeah. and are not likely to take any wish wash. But if the candidate is the one who gave you 200 bob, yeah. Yeah. then you already uh, took yeah. your cut. I mean, early, I mean, so yeah, and, and like you say, it, it could be starting uh, something. However, if you take a look at uh, the results that are coming in for Sterehe constituency, uh, Jaguar is in the lead, 36,000 votes. That's uh, representing 52% of the votes already counted. Stephen Bogo from ODM is at 22,000. And Boniface is at 9,358. Really? Yeah. Sam Gishur is tweeting tonight, the most disappointing thing I have witnessed. Starehe gave more votes to Stephen Bogo than they gave to Boniface Mwangi. Oh, my God. That is a shocker and a disappointment. That is stunning. Quite frankly. But for a first-timer and an outsider <sighs> and an activist... That's not a bad show. He gave his soul. 9,000, I mean, he's doing better than, uh, than the others in the presidential race. Than my, so than my favorite donkey. <laughs> yes, and those guys are, are polling nationwide. This guy is polling in one in constituency. One constituency. So he's not okay. doing too badly. And for Boniface, and if you stick it out, he might actually, he may the actually yeah. make I, a dent somewhere. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm just taking a look at the provisional ones. I guess I'll, I'll, I'll get, uh, you know, of, of, that's of, of a, the polling centers. That's, that's an upset. In total. Yeah. yeah, well, an upset. But I just want to talk about how the money for campaign finance, you know, that is raised in a campaign is used. Um, because Boniface did pretty much that, you know, just having some very close interaction. And that's how he spent a lot of money yeah. uh, with the voters, you know, doing the door-to-door, -door, spending time with them. And it's pretty much, some would say, a similar scenario. Um, at the national level with the presidency. Mm. I mean, I don't think we saw some big ads on television, radio, in the paper 
except for the last free week. Airtime. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, you covered uh, all that, their campaigns. Well, that that could be that that very well could be. However, you know they spent quite a bit of money on their rallies, on all those stops that you were saying, on mm. meeting the people and taking the message there. I mean, if you took a look at you know just the infrastructure in those rallies, some serious infrastructure they were putting mm. up there, big screens. I mean, it was something else, though, wasn't it? Um, but not thinking in the traditional sense, which is not going to media and spending big time. They only did that. Mm. I think the push was, what, the last three days yeah. uh, to, the, to the end of the campaign period. So is it also just um, signaling a shift in how the campaign is done? So it's not doing the big spending, you know, in terms of, of, of what happens in Nairobi in the papers and, and that sort of thing. But it's, we're going to go to the people. Mm. Both of them, and I think, I think suffice it to say, for both Raila and Uhuru, they really went out to the people. No? I mean, they took a, a leaf out of the old professor's book. Mm. Remember, Professor Moi, the professor of politics, mm. is the one who used to pull that stunt for us. Would be all of us in Nairobi clamoring for multi party. We are all in Uhuru Park, we are chanting our yes. songs, we are he singing, invented when and we are feeling so yeah. good. And dude <laughs> would go. spend none of his time here with yeah. us. He would be going to Mashinani, and there are people, even today, if Moi went back on the ballot, they would still vote for him because he connected with them on that personal level. So I think that's where these campaigns also realize, you know what, when you have the media hype and everything, there's a certain constituency you do capture. Yeah. But there's a larger constituency who that is don't. Out there. Because, like I said, there's some people just because he stopped here in our shopping center, we could actually reach out and touch him. Mm -hmm. It was that close. Mm -hmm. That is it for them, that he actually knows that they exist. That would be enough. And with moving forward also, I want to see politicians who have that level of awareness, that you know what, if you want my vote, have the courtesy to, to ask for it personally. Because even for us in, in Nairobi, Many of us, when you watch those ads, if we're really honest, they didn't do neither here nor there. You saw right through the mm -hmm. whatever was being advertised. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't really sway you. So time has come. That's where I know for us something like the debate would have been important because we want to hear how you're engaging with the issues. So I think we are seeing a, a shift. And I'm hoping next time we don't have as many posters littering our environment or as much uh, Is there th any those, chance those road about, shows, those about really rules. annoying road shows. It's about rules. I mean, yeah. it's like if I, if I shout loud enough, eventually I will vote for you. Yeah. I don't know who gave them that logic. I hope now to see politicians do knock on my door and say hello. My name is Joem Divo and I'm running for MP of this area. Would you consider giving me your vote? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, well, well, let's see if the game changes because, you know, it's changing. Uh, Boniface was even doing phone calls. I mean, in yeah, the last week uh, leading absolutely. up to that, it was, mm -hmm. you know, hi, I'm calling on behalf of Boniface, you know, would you, would you vote? And this is what he stands for. But don't you think so this is instructive in the sense that in what way? this was eventually, ultimately, a race between Raila and, uh, and Uhuru? And it didn't matter who else was in play, regardless of what mm -hmm. issues you put on the table, yeah. those things were subsidiary. Mm -hmm. The main contest was who is the face of the Raila campaign and who is the face of the Kenyatta campaign. Mm. And that's what seems to be carrying the day. And if you look at the ethnic characteristics of Stare, for instance, for a long time, mm -hmm. you know, it's been all the Muranga guys uh, taking mm. the votes there. Yeah. So I, I think, and then you see the Sonko, the bigger na picture Nairobi thing right. mm -hmm. and all of that narrative. So I think it was, it, it is disappointing for me because I think that Boniface and a lot of the people that I suspect voted in Sarehe are about Boniface's uh, uh, age. And that's the youthful promise that we thought was going to inject itself on, uh, in, in these in, in this elections. It has, but it, it seems like it's not on the issue side of things. And that's why I think, in my view, now, if you set the presidential yeah. thing aside okay. and start to look at the the much more retail level, the, who is your MCA, who is your MP, who is your yeah. governor. Okay, so that level uh -huh. is what is going to tell us how the youth voted uh -huh. and were they voting on issues. All right, yes. And speaking of issues, and if you can just go <coughs> zero in on um, Sarah Hill constituency, they had two celebrities, if you like, in yeah, Steve yeah. Bogo and, and, and Jaguar. Um, and maybe this is perhaps not a fair um, assessment to make just based on Sarah Hill alone. I mean, but when you think about it, Boniface is, is, is a celebrity in his own right, Absolutely. if you like, you know, with the activism. Significant I mean, but when you think about, you know, the young people and, and uh, Stephen Bogo's white parties, what, were, they, were they called white parties? Do I have anyone in this studio who's young enough? Are they white parties? Yeah, so it's, there's something about that. 
What, so they wear white? Oh, yeah, they, oh, it's an all-white party, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not white people to going. <laughs> <laughs> they wear white clothes. <laughs> yes, but, <laughs> but when you think about it, I mean, that is what you know him for. Then there's, there's Jaguar. I mean, was it also just, you know, an easy ride, particularly when you think about young people and if you take a look at the, the, the national yeah. statistics when it comes to the, uh, the youth uh, registered, you know, 51% are aged mm. 35 and below. That's a huge number. Mm. So what is it that appeals to young people, um, you know, that gets them you know, the, I, I think going I think, to the polls? I, I think when you, this specific case for me is, 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 is worth a case study. Uh, because everything that Boniface stands for, everything that we know him for, mm -hmm. he, you know, he is the, the, G, the Gidongo of that generation, right, right, the anti-corruption right. crusade, okay. mm -hmm. you know, and, and he's been as graphic mm -hmm. and, and as dramatic as, and as, uh, yes. as can be. And, and, and as and radical in a way that young people would, absolutely, would identify absolutely. with. Absolutely. And, mm -hmm. and when the same young people say that corruption is a, is, is a millstone that is going to drown this country, and then you look at Jaguar, and then you look at Stephen Bogo, then you look at what they represent, this, 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 this enormous entrancement around m materialism mm -hmm. and, all of, and all of the o o ostentatious consumption that comes with it, then it, it, it just befuddles me. Okay. Without casting aspersions or making any allegations against uh, Stephen Bogo or Jaguar, it was the study that you released and worked on. Absolutely. Same study, talking about young people that said they would get their mm -hmm. money anyway Absolutely. as long as they don't get caught. Absolutely. So it confirms so this in, in ways that like, just... Uh, in terms of sad. values, perhaps it's not... And, and by the way, so for, the for all thing. intents and purposes, those guys, I, I will no, not cast any aspersions on them. People. They're probably great people. They but for what they have. And, 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 and I think that's... that's so, so if we take that face value and, uh, and just basically say, what was, it, what was attractive? I want to look past... Stephen Bogo and I want to look at look past Jaguar and yeah. basically put this at the doorstep of Raila Odinga and Uhuru Kenyatta uh -huh. that the vote was cast for them mm. and the young people basically were disenfranchised in the sense that they could inject their own personalities and their own fears and their own aspirations through someone like uh, like uh, like uh, uh, Boniface Mwangi because mm -hmm. somebody told them that it's it's not going to work that way. This is about Baba and Mudamaki. Exactly, but also. This, today I had, a, no, rather yesterday, I had a call from someone asking me, no, me, I only know who I'm voting for, president and governor. Yeah. What do I do about these the other rest. people? Yeah. What do you yeah, think? Yeah. So they basically wanted to know how I was going to vote so right. they can vote the same way. So there's also this constituency where basically voting for them is picky, picky, punky. So when they go there, it's... <laughs> Who, who, who do I know? But wouldn't that... It doesn't even matter how you know them. That's right. So they're like, you know what, at least this guy I've heard of him, Angalao, eh? And... It wasn't but too bad. Be the because same would so be said um, of, of, of the not top. just exactly. young people, That's why but large. just about of everybody. I mean, take a look at the choices you have. You have to vote across six levels I of government. All these people and you have must come up. to you and you have lined up. And at some point, it just becomes exhausted. name and face recognition. You're exhausted. You've seen so much. Mm. And there's suddenly some people who have never been introduced to you. Is it, isn't that just typical of every voter, whether young or old? I mean, don't you go there and look for a face and a name that you recognize on that ballot paper? You've seen some of the other ballot papers we had that were long with like 34 names or whatever. Mm. I mean, I, mean I was given an MCA list and I, I remember I made that, I, I, I quipped at the, the clerk who gave me, I was like, is this a tissue roll or it's actually, because it looked like, you know, those ones you're given at Eco Toilet. Right? Yes. So I was like, chick, what is this? So she's like, no, actually, that's your, yeah. the MCA one was that long. Right. And it, that's what it boiled, even for me for MCA, I must admit, it boiled down to who did I remember from the campaign? To, which posters did I see? Mm -hmm. Which face looked familiar? And that one, I must admit, I just voted gender. I was like, you know what, yeah, there's this woman here and all these men. So I just did affirmative action. Yeah. So, but, and, but for young people, it's worse because they can be flippant. They can be frivolous. They, okay. don't, have, they, they don't even wait on anything. That's why, we, as you were saying, name recognition. Some of them will just be like, you know what? So, what's to jenge vijana? Alright, so let's, let's, let's put it a different way. There's definitely something that a candidate, whether young or old, would be able to say to this 51% of the voters in this country that would resonate with them. Mm. Um, and maybe it's not the young guy who has Ngomapoa and who is recognizable. Um, 
and perhaps having this comparison between Kenya and the US is not fair, is not right. But how is it that Bernie Sanders was able to get the youthful vote? Bernie Sanders was, he's, yeah, uh, he's no 35 year old. Absolutely. He's, he's 72. no youthful he's guy. Raila's he age. doesn't have a popular song. He's not a reality television star. But he was able to get that. Whilst, again, I say maybe we're comparing oranges and no, apples no, 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 no. when we compare Kenya and, and the it US. Was, but it was the what issues. is that? Yeah. Bernie Sanders was about tuition aid, it was mm -hmm. about making university education affordable, it was about Employment is about okay. retooling so young people for the that, new let's generation. Let's flip that onto uh, the Kenyan one. Um, both Nas <coughs> and Jubilee talked about pre-secondary education. Um, I think they both also talked about taking it all the way to tertiary level. Um, I believe, in fact, Uhuru in his last rally said, Sasa wewe kazi yako ni kuza. Na kulea. Na kulea. The rest... Mm -hmm. Tuachie. Tuachie. Tu I mean, weren't these the sort of messages that were, and it'll be interesting to see maybe when the polls are out to know yeah, yeah, how they voted, you absolutely, know, based on, on gender and, uh, and indeed on, on age. You see, one of the things that I really fault our pollsters uh, on is that demographic segmentation mm -hmm. of, 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 of voting. Like, for instance, mm -hmm. From this election and the previous one, we should know how young people voted in 2013. Yep. We should know how they voted now for the presidency and how they vote down the tickets, mm -hmm. okay, down the ballot. But it's not there. So even people like us who kind of try to spend some time analyzing these things, it's very difficult to understand, say, for instance, what, 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 what really flipped would, what, what's yeah. going to flip the vote yeah. mm -hmm. in favor of Raila or Uhuru? How would young women vote? Mm -hmm. How would uh, young males vote? How would college graduates vote? How would people in the village who have a farm... Formal vote? and informal sector. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. How would professionals vote? How would teachers vote, for instance? Who, who was talking about the unions in a favorable way? Mm. Uh, yeah. That would then jump Well, I those. think with the unions now, we know that. And that's an interesting point that you bring out, because the unions were largely in the NASA block. Yes, and now that even drove uh, this uh, conspiracy theory that maybe all these strikes, the timing, the hardline mm -hmm. stances, mm -hmm. the re refusing to resolve for whatever may have actually been part of the political play to try and get people to, to a place where... Jubilee? Exactly, to get them frustrated with government because that is something we're still talking about. Why are the nurses still on strike? Right, the doctors and are on strike for a hundred uh, yes, days. Yes, but also on the other hand, you would and, want yeah. to ask yourself, even these nurses, they knew we had an election coming up. They knew people would be out busy campaigning. Nobody would be listening to them. Why did they decide to go now? Why but did they not decide uh, to well, go in September? It's also a strategy that works, that sometimes this is the time when, you know, to strike while the used to work. Not, it used to work for the teachers, timing yeah. it with the... With the children's examinations. Exams, yes. But uh, let's face it, Kenyans are those people who, when they face hardship, they just look for the next... I mean, when water doesn't come in our taps, we just look for the Bowser. We are these hardy people. <laughs> we just sort ourselves out and move on. Yeah. We saw it with 100-plus days with the doctors. Mm -hmm. Why would the nurses imagine that it would be any different from them if government has held out for over 100 days with the doctors? So that's why now, for them defending and saying, no, uh, it was actually... Uh, well timed, we had given notice, and then you see Panyako going on and endorsing. It it actually now makes us wonder: this industrial action was it timed to discredit uh -huh. Jubilee, or was it actually are they genuinely looking for their dues? Okay, I'd like us to take a look at uh, some of the latest numbers uh, that are in now uh, with the presidential oh, race. Wow. So take a look at that now: uh, six <coughs> million five hundred seventy-four thousand and eighty-seven for Uhuru Kenyatta, fifty-five point two one percent of the vote, and uh, for Raila Odinga, it's five million two hundred thirty-six thousand seven hundred and twenty-four. That's forty-three point nine eight percent of the votes cast. Let's take a look at the other candidates and see if they've also um, added up some numbers. All right, Joseph Nyaka moved up a little bit. Uh, 29,000. Yeah, at least now 0.24 percent. Before it was 0 0.1, yes. Uh, hmm. Mohammed Abdu Badida is at 23,000. He's got 0 0.2 percent of the votes counted so far. And um, if we can just go further down... I'd like to talk about him as well. Um, 0 0.17, and then uh, Jafet Kaloui is the independent candidate with just 8,806 votes. Can we take a look at Shahalaha Khwajirongo? 
with 8,521 and Professor Michael Wainaina with 6,519. Are you surprised uh, by how Dr. Ekuru Akot um, is polling in these numbers? Because he touted himself as the third way, the third alliance, you know, the alternative. And I know there were many attempts that were made to just rally all of the others around him to have, you know, sort of one possibly independent one, in, yeah, one independent or alternative candidate, if you like. Um, but there was a sense in which perhaps some people believe that this guy might actually poll much better and be, you know, that third alternative voice. Now, he's not polling so well. Mm. He's not third. He's not fourth. He's what, fifth? <coughs> Sixth? Thereabout? Mm. He's fourth. Um, are you surprised? Do you think, did you expect him to do better or... Is he performing just like you thought he would? No, <laughs> I'm actually surprised that Joe Nyaga is yeah, pulling to 9,000 right. votes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, from where? You know, I never had anything <laughs> the guy said. He never showed up at the but debates. But is, is he benefiting from, I think you know, the, the Nyaga name? name? It's, it's a Nyaga yeah. name. And, 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 yeah. and I would like to suspect that a lot of, because, you know, as, as, as the polls, as, as the votes started coming in, you know, I, I, I could project a uh, a... a I could project something like a correlation between his numbers and Uhuru's numbers rising. Uh -huh. So those votes came from about the same place. Yeah. Uh, so those who Central didn't Kenya, want to vote for Uhuru Central but didn't Kenya, want to go yeah. too far. Central Kenya okay. were basically <laughs> disenfranchised, <laughs> etc. Who didn't want to go too far. Yeah. To save someone that they would feel, they know they would, he wouldn't go anywhere, but they kind of feel like we didn't vote for this other guy. So I think it's, it's mm -hmm. all the guys who didn't like Uhuru for some reason. We're basically from Central Kenya, yeah, uh, and that's the Central Kenya protest vote, if you ask me. Okay, mm -hmm. I want to talk about another one um, uh, before we get into some numbers. Listen, I think more than any other time, we have seen a different side to Musale Mudavadi, who was the chief campaigner. Last time, he called himself the safe pair of hands. I've interviewed him a number of times. You know, his his you know peace loving his. Um, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's the calm fellow. And then, Nasahau, Nasahau, Nasahau. I mean, he, he came alive and he was charismatic <laughs> in this one. So here's the question I have for you now. What happens to Musale Mudavadi after this election? This is Has he built some capital that, that could ride him through to 2022? Or is it over for him it. now? I yeah? seriously doubt it. What the, the problem with, uh, not the problem, but one factor with the NASA coalition that you cannot discount is that isolate any of the principles without Ray Laudinga and they, did, they could not hold, hold a candle by themselves. So Rayla was sort of the, the fire that was burning and they all sort of put their torches to the flame mm -hmm. to try and make the flame bigger. But if they all removed their flames, Rayla would be able to stand by himself but, they but neither of the others had much to go on. And therefore, that's why the coalition was necessary, because they were becoming a part of a whole. But the bigger chunk of the whole already existed. Now, for Musalia, moving forward, I think what he has done, he sort of redeemed himself as a serious politician. Because, you know, th that pacifist uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. name had really followed him for a while. Right. And the people used to think he's a bit yellow, he's a bit yeah. of a coward politically. Yeah. And he looked like, by the way, his, his goose was cooked. And then he comes up with this NASA thing. And all of a sudden, not only does he manage to swallow cord, he actually manages to whip up NASA into something that yeah. becomes a formidable force. Mm -hmm. Look at where we were at the beginning of the year, before we even started looking for a NASA flag bearer. Um, the Raila Kalonzo ticket before was NASA flagging. Before NASA was even a thing. Yes, before <laughs> NASA was a thing. Yeah. When they were still arguing about the MOU, the whatnot, mm -hmm. that time they are polling, what, 17, 20 percent? Yeah. And they're polling, the, their ratings were really, really bad. But once NASA took hold and took off, I think it really helped Musale Mudavadi. So can it last till 2022? I don't think it can last till 2022, but it has sort of revived the hope. And you see how the lawyers for once have coalesced around one particular figure. Because we usually scatter, I'm, I'm a lawyer, that's what I'm saying, we, we usually scatter <laughs> Good wherever stay, the yeah. wind blows. Yeah. Wherever the wind blows, you find the lawyer vote is hardly ever in one pot. Well, but some say because they're democratic. They it vote is, with their conscience. It is and true. And they're not herded. It is true. <laughs> but, but for once, we, we actually yeah. all came. They endorsed him as a spokesman. And even Wetangula decided, you know what? I'm going to work with this fellow, even though I was a principal before mm -hmm. he was a principal. And that has helped him. And if, if he manages to keep himself relevant, 
He might be able to make it 2022, but in 2022, he'll need a new gimmick. I don't think NASA is going to work for him by then. Yeah, but then anyway, like they say, a day, but is, he's a day is such a long time in politics. So, mm. I mean, five years is going to be a long time uh, as well. Um, let's focus on Nairobi a little bit. So, um, Shabesh. What numbers? And mm. uh, Esther Pesaris. Mm. Here what are the, the latest numbers. numbers. Like? Um, so... Esther Pasaris is at 109,310, 54.45% of the vote. And then um, Rachel Shebesh is at 83,000. And then Rehab Dambuki from the Wiper movement. Well, that's at 2,400. Um, but so far, Pasaris is in the lead. Um, first of all, we have two million votes they're competing for. Yes. Mm. That's, yes. That's, that's, that, yes. That doesn't give anybody any comfort. Ooh, yeah. It's, 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 yeah. It's, pre, it's pretty fluid. And this is, uh, oh yeah, just 422 mm. out of 3,378. Yeah. Too close, too, too early to yeah, call? Too early to call. It's, yeah? it's too, still pretty fluid. Are you willing to put some some money on it, make some projections. Which way do you think it'll make go? Make it interesting. But <laughs> <laughs> make it interesting, exactly. You know, I'm trying to kind of search in my in, in my head some of the opinion polls that came out of Infotrack mm -hmm. and Ipsos, mm -hmm. and try and apply it to this. Yeah. Uh, they 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 predicted or the polls showed indicated a very close contest between Raila and Uhuru. Mm -hmm. We're not seeing that very close contest yeah. so far. Um, Kidero was projected to, by those polls uh, to be ahead. We're not seeing that. And a lot of people anecdotally basically said that Pesarius was just going to wipe Shebesh out of the map. Mm -hmm. And now she's in serious contention here. Is she, is she a better contender now than she was in 2013? Because in 2013, Shebesh just, you know, ran with it. Um, do you think she... she put up a formidable fight this time around, perhaps better than the last time? She was unwell at some point, and I remember Pesari is going to see her at hospital. I, I don't... I, I didn't yeah. When she I, injured her yeah. foot. I yeah. didn't, I didn't yeah. see her in the campaign trail in a mm -hmm. vigorous, vibrant way, but I, but she might... She, she could be riding the Jubilee Sonko tide. So, mm. so, so, so that might help in many no, ways. So I, I think their, their fates will be tied to how those big mm. parties perform. So mm -hmm. I think Shebesh has to hang very tight on, on the NASA dream. And, and, and if that kind of flies, then uh, Pasaris is going to win. No, but no, the thing with Shebesh is a bit of an enigma because she was not running. And then two weeks to the nomination, she decides she's going to run. And she comes and wipes the floor with her opponents, yeah. who had been on the beat for a while mm -hmm. prior to. Mm -hmm. And uh, once she did that, one thing came out for me with Shebesh is that I realized she's a grassroots mobilizer. She's yeah. a little bit yeah. like Sonko. Uh -huh. So she won't do the big ticket things. Mm -hmm. But remember, like during the, the, the women rep debate, yeah. one of the allegations yeah. that Ms. Pesadris leveled against her is that she's been issuing bursary uh, checks when kids have closed school. So when I went to follow up, I was like, okay, what bursary checks were this? Uh -huh. But it was to hairdressing school, to learning school, okay. driving school, there computer. Yeah. And She's also been involved with the, with the adult um, uh, yes. education. Yeah. 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 And yeah. so she has yeah. that touching the heart thing. Yeah. And she does it by tying the lesso, putting on the rubber mm -hmm. shoes and mm -hmm. getting stuck with yeah. it. She's not afraid to, 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 to go down and get dirty. Right? And that is what is giving her some mm. mileage because it, it's true. In terms of campaigning, yeah. Ms. Pasaris has done a lot more uh, campaigning overtly mm -hmm. than Ms. Shebesh, Shebesh has. But the thing with Ms. Shebesh is that away from the glare, she there's, does, there's a lot she's doing. There's a lot she's okay. doing, and All that right. is, is actually showing okay. in her we'll, numbers We'll come now. back and talk about that, because uh, Nairobi is interesting, and, and we can take a look at the number of valid votes, um, and then uh, with the presidential ones, and also take a look at maybe uh, any projections we can make for the senatorial or gubernatorial race. But um, you do remember that we're speaking to journalists, uh, some serious ones at that, who've covered not just this one, uh, but uh, quite a number of elections past. Julie, um, over to you. Uh, new numbers that are in. Um, exciting? No? Interesting? Perhaps? Yeah. Actually, three. Julie, are you there? 
I feel like doing a knock knock joke. Like, knock knock. Who's okay? Sorry. <laughs> right. We are still here at the city center studios discussing results as they continue to continue to trickle in very slowly. But some interesting ones that we have gathered from the IBC website. For example, in uh, Bomet County, it looks like Joyce Laboso, House Speaker, is ahead of Isaac Ruto in Nairobi. Uh, Mamata Esther Pasari seems to be uh, pipping. Uh, 